Welcome to Airborne Unlimited from AirVenture 2015 at Whitman Regional Airport. I'm Bree Cross. Coming up on today's program. Four months from introduction to certification, Aspen's AOA gets the FAA's blessing. NTSB Chair Christopher Hart says GA safety remains a primary focus for the board. And a new group of pilots gets their wings from Able Flight. In only four months since its introduction, Aspen Avionics has obtained FAA certification for its angle of attack display for Evolution MFD. Aspen Avionics President and CEO John Uzakai says that AOA is one of the most important safety features available in aviation. You know, the FAA is really paying attention to this from a loss of control standpoint, and they're, that, that is a targeted safety area, and they have paid a lot of attention to bringing these types of technologies to market. And I believe the FAA has done a remarkably fine job in adjusting to the fast pace of technology that's coming to the market, and I think this is an example of it. They have a lot of attention on angle attack and loss of control, and uh, we came up with an innovative solution that had some interesting certification aspects to it, being on a primary flight display and those aspects. And they worked very closely with us to make it, make it happen. So I think you see something that, you know, with the pace of technology, I think the regulatory environment is doing its best to try to keep up with it. Piper announced a big order from Flight Safety. Piper CEO Simon Caldicott spoke with ANN's Jim Campbell about the order. It's uh, initially 26 Warriors, Piper Warriors for delivery this year, mm -hmm. with six Piper Arrows, firm order for delivery in the first quarter of next year, and options for a further 20 Warriors. So it is big news, it's good for the industry, it's obviously good for Piper aircraft, and also for flight safety. But I think they're pretty excited about refreshing their, their fleet down in Vero Beach. So. Caldicott said that the order will not affect the layoff of 150 people, announced by Piper earlier this month because the airplanes were accounted for in production projections. He did say that other orders in the works could reduce the number of layoffs at the Vero Beach, Florida plant should they be finalized. Piper will also be delivering three new twin-engine Seminole aircraft to the University of North Dakota. The first of the airplanes was accepted Tuesday at AirVenture by UND at the Piper Aircraft Exhibit. The remaining two aircraft will be delivered to UND next week at an acceptance ceremony in Vero Beach, Florida. The pilot training aircraft will join the aerospace program's training fleet of more than 120 aircraft. One of the great things about AirVenture is that you get to speak with the people who are making policy in D.C. And Tom Patton got that opportunity earlier today. On Tuesday, NTSB Chairman Christopher Hart made a presentation at Forum Pavilion 7 to talk about general aviation issues being addressed by the board. Later, he talked with ANN's Tom Patton about some of those concerns. Chairman Hart, first of all, I want to ask, how important is it for the NTSB to be at a show like Oshkosh? I think it's very important to show the general aviation community how committed we are to improving general aviation safety. There are many general aviation pilots at the NTSB. I'm a general aviation pilot. Uh, two of our other members are also active pilots and so I think it's very important to show how much we're committed to improving general aviation safety. It was announced today about a loss of control kind of XPRIZE situation and I know loss of control is one of the things that the board is really interested in in trying to reduce the number of loss of control accidents. What are your efforts in that regard? We've had a number of efforts in that regard. One of the efforts is on October the 12th, we're going to have a loss of control forum. So we bring together all the experts from the regulator, from the pilot community, from the manufacturers, from around the world to look at this loss of control issue and see just what is it that's going wrong. Why are so many people making this mistake that can kill themselves? It's the biggest single reason for fatalities. It's more than 40% of the fatalities in general aviation result from loss of control. And that generally starts with an aerodynamic stall. So that's the question is, why is this happening? One of the answers to that, there are a lot of remedies that have been proposed, but one of the answers to that is let the pilots know what their angle of attack is so they know when they're close to an aerodynamic stall. So we're proposing angle of attack indicators in the airplane. And one thing more, if there is something that you don't think that the general aviation community knows about the NTSB that you'd like to relay, what would that be? That we are not adversaries. We are not here to blame anybody, to point fingers. We are here to find out what went wrong and to, and to see what we can do to fix it. And so that's why our big message here is 
we're preaching to the choir here. These people are here because they love improving safety. There are too many people here who aren't as interested in improving safety. We want these people to go back home and talk to their friends who aren't here who should be to help get the safety message out. After the break, AEA gives you the opportunity to win $1,000 at AirVenture. We are the Aero News Network, with over 250,000 stories, 7,000 Aero podcasts, 2,500 Aero TV programs, 500 episodes of Airborne, and so much more. It's a record of performance unequaled in the Aeroverse, and there's far more to come. Aero News, committed to innovate, inform, inspire, and disrupt the aviation world. When the runway is hard to find, Four Flight's moving map and extended center lines keep you tracking toward the correct runway. Four Flight, the app pilots depend on. Welcome back to Airborne Unlimited. We're coming to you from Oshkosh, Wisconsin and AirVenture 2015. If you're in Oshkosh and you see something that we need to see, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Once again, the AEA is giving away $1,000 to five lucky aircraft owners to help them get ready for the 2020 mandate for ADSB. AEA President Paula Dirks says that they've already announced one daily winner and they're looking forward to more the rest of the week. Paula, AEA is back again with its $1,000 giveaway to help pilots and aircraft owners get ready for the 2020 mandate. How's it going so far? So far, so good. We've already actually awarded the first winner, um, $1,000 toward equipping for ADSB by January 1, 2020. Um, we have four more chances this week from Hangar B, booth 2035 and 36 for an aircraft owner to come here and it's very easy for them to fill out a card. We draw names every evening and we'll have four more lucky winners of $1,000 toward an ADSB equipage into their aircraft. They must be an aircraft owner of course and they must use an AEA member avionics repair station to do the installation. They have a year to do it. So, you know, plenty of time to be able to pick out what great avionics system you want to put in your airplane and you've got a year to get it installed. And to find that perfect piece of equipment, you've got the buyer's guide available here at the booth. We sure do. Fresh, hot off the press is the 2015-16 AEA's Pilot's Guide to Avionics. Lots of great articles in there about ADSB and getting compliance, systems to choose from, features, what your particular aircraft instrument panel is going to need to become compliant as well. And they're complimentary. We've got thousands of them here at the show. So, Pilots so take them home by. so you don't yes, have to help. Please, please take them home. <laughs> Six new Able Flight pilots got their wings today at a ceremony at Boeing Plaza at EAA Air Venture. Each of the six pilots were honored individually by scholarship sponsors that included Jet Aviation, AOPA, Bombardier, Forflight, Shell Aviation, and Tempest. The Able Flight class of 2015 includes a pilot who was born without hands or feet and earned his ATP rating through Able Flight, two pilots who are quadriplegics, one who is a paraplegic, one who is deaf, and another who is a wounded veteran. Charles Stites, executive director of Able Flight, said there were some new sponsors coming on board which will help grow the program. We're very pleased today to announce that Zenith Aircraft has signed on as a sponsor of Able Flight and will be sponsoring a full scholarship for 2016. And in addition, we'll be working with Sebastian Hines at Zenith to develop some hand controls for the airplanes that they design and sell. And that'll expand the opportunities for our pilots to have more airplanes out there with hand controls. EAA is all about experimental airplanes, and every airplane is a prototype at some point. Two of those airplanes made their arrival this week at AirVenture. Airbus brought their new A350 XWB to Oshkosh this year, arriving on Monday. 
The airplane makes extensive use of composites in its construction and is designed to compete for the same routes as Boeing's Dreamliner, which was at Oshkosh in 2013. And two F-22 Raptors made an arrival at AirVenture Tuesday afternoon. The Raptor combines stealth design with a supersonic, highly maneuverable dual engine, long range requirements of an air-to-air -air fighter and will have an inherent air-to-ground capability according to the U.S. Air Force. Meanwhile, the latest air superiority fighter for the Air Force, the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Marine Corps, the F-35 Lightning II, will be arriving at Oshkosh on Wednesday. After these messages, part two of Jim Campbell's interview with Jack Pelton. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. NavWorks makes ADS-B affordable. Certified or experimental, NavWorks gives you high-quality next-gen avionic solutions that dramatically increase your situational awareness. Check us out now on the web at www.navworks.com. The debate is no longer about upgrading GA aircraft with next-gen, it's about financing it. The next-gen GA fund is about doing just that. Find out more at www.nextgenfund.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back to Airborne Unlimited on Aero TV, coming to you from Oshkosh, Wisconsin at AirVenture 2015. Earlier in the week, our Jim Campbell sat down with Jack Pelton of the EAA to get an in-depth discussion of the industry and organization. We'll be bringing you a portion of that interview each day from Oshkosh. Today, they discussed the FAA and the lengthy process of eliminating the third class medical requirement for private pilots. We have watched EAA take on a number of very prominent concerns on the part of membership. Uh, we keep knocking on the door of Washington, but it doesn't seem like anybody's home. What's happening? Oh, now, now you're going to get me my soapbox. It is probably the most frustrating environment we've been in in a long time. And I say that going back to uh, 2006, uh, FA reauthorization in that year. Ed Bolin at NBAA sent me, he was going to have to testify, I think it was a few weeks ago, and he says, Jack, I ran across your testimony back in 2006 around FAA reauthorization. And he says, it's the same issues and the same problems. And yet, here we go again, talking about it one more time. For us, our number one priority from an advocacy standpoint is uh, getting rid of this third class medical that, that has uh, no benefit from a safety standpoint. It's another hurdle and roadblock financially for people in aviation. Um, been through a, a frustrating three years on this. We, we got to a point where we think we had the FAA convinced that, that this was a, something they should consider and do, and they created an NPRM, which is a Notice of Proposed Rulemaking. The process is it leaves the FAA, goes to the Department of Transportation, and then goes to OMB. Um, it went to the Department of Transportation last September and has died. Uh, they cannot get it out of there, and the Department of Transportation is not supporting it. So now we're in the, the legislative battle and fight to try to get some, some piece of legislation through that will help uh, get rid of the third class medical. Right now, the Pilots' Bill of Rights II that Senator Jim Inhofe is sponsoring seems to be the only path we have to make that happen. And uh, we're pushing and fighting and, and struggling to see if we can get something done. Boy, he has been effective, hasn't he? He, he has, and he's a, uh, he manages the floor of the Senate real well when he has a piece of legislation he wants to get through. Uh, but he's an he, RV pilot. He's got to be okay. <laughs> that's true. He is an RV pilot. And he's here every year. Camps here every year. He hosts a, a nice luncheon on, on Saturday for his Oklahoma community. But it, it's just frustrating to hear that he's coming up against so many people that want to fight him on this. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would never bet against him, but I'm, I'm, I'm just frustrated that things just aren't moving on something that sh seems uh, to be very reasonable. It's, this is not a, uh, a piece of legislation that, that should be extremely controversial in my mind. 
Is it time for the aviation world to get more aggressively political, especially in shaping um, our input to both legislators and future legislators as we come up in a pretty uh, interesting election year? I, I think it is. And I, I, I know I was sharing with the staff here that uh, they sense my frustration and nothing happening. And, and, and I always want to make sure they understand that it's not, I'm not at, I'm not the kind that gives up, and I don't think we as an industry should ever give up. If anything, we need to double down. I mean, mm -hmm. we really, this one is going to be the, you've made me mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore response. And I think we have to do that, especially if this bill doesn't get passed through. We've got to get ugly and, and get vocal and start trying to make a difference. I think we're going to have the same fight with FA reauthorization. Mm -hmm. Privatization, which is being talked about today, uh, can have some really nasty consequences that we're not even a, we're not even aware of what that really means. But the, you know the sense you can come to is somebody's got to pay for it then, mm -hmm. and if it isn't being paid for in today's system through the fuel tax and through appropriations, uh, what are they conjuring up in the back room that we don't know about? Because there hasn't been a lot of visibility as to exactly what that would look like. Tomorrow, Jack and Jim discuss what might be the next step in aviation. That's our program for today. We'll be back tomorrow to bring you the day's events from AirVenture 2015 at Whitman Regional Airport. I'm Bree Cross. Thanks for watching.